Good morning, I'm Krista Campbell. Thank you for joining us today for Cost Map, Bringing Construction Costing to ArcGIS. Before we get started, I would like to encourage you to post your questions. We will have time at the end of the webinar for Q&A. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on GeoNet and Meetup. You will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording location. We also have two handouts today that are included in this webinar, so um, please feel free to download those and take a look at those later on. Today, we're going to be discussing a new product called Cost Map. We're going to start with a short introduction to RS Means data and how this product became a reality. Joining me today is Kevin Stewart and Steve Mulberry from GIS Inc. Kevin is the Director of Sales and Steve is an Enterprise Architect. They're going to discuss Cost Map as well as provide um, demonstrations for you. Alan Bacon, Director of Product Development at Gordian, is also joining us for the Q&A. I hope you enjoy the webinar. Let's get started. Our topics today, what is RS means data, an idea is sparked and partnering to make it real. So what is RS means data? Well, Gordian is the world's leading provider of construction cost data and they publish RS means data. So RS means data is accurate and up to date. It provides fast and reliable cost estimates and um, it allows you to precisely project your con construction costs. Um, Arsh means data is published in a print version, so as many of you might know, uh, there used to be, and, and you can still get the printed cost book from RS means. Um, in the older times past, you would use this print book to go through and select your items and cost out your projects, and, and it would take some time, so it was a tedious task. Today, you can get the RS means data online and this is a benefit above the printed version because it eliminates the need to manually multiply cost indexes per city and it allows you to search a little more quickly. But it can still take some time because you still need to look for your items um, line by line. So what we're gonna show you today is how this data is being made available inside GIS. This idea to bring RS means data into GIS started at the ISO Technical Committee 251 meeting hosted in Redlands, um, October of 2016. If you guys aren't familiar with ISO TC 251, this is a technical committee for asset management systems. Um, they're responsible for the development of the ISO 55000 family of standards. So there are three standards, the ISO 55000, which is asset management overview principles and terminology. There's the ISO 55001, which is your asset management systems and requirements, and the ISO 55002, which provide guidelines for implementing the management system and requirements. So at this TC251 meeting, Alan Bacon from Gordian um, presented on Gordian and RS means data, and he talked about their API. So this was significant to Esri staff and particularly the water team because making the RS means data accessible via the API presented a great opportunity to integrate it with ArcGIS. So after this meeting, we reached out to Gordian and we reached out to GIS Inc. and we presented the possibility of working together to bring this data into the ArcGIS platform. So all of us came together at the Esri Partner Conference last March, um, Esri, Gordian, and GIS Inc. Uh, we met around this picnic table and we discussed what it would mean and what it might look like to build a product that would provide an easy solution for you guys to help cost out projects. So it didn't take long for our group to realize that the product could be created and it would be an amazing integration of the data. So as you've probably guessed by the title of the webinar, we did move forward with the plan and in less than a year, we have a solution for you. So we've partnered to make cost estimating easier with a web-based solution. We're excited to present it and get your feedback. So please remember to enter your comments and questions within the GoToWebinar dialog boxes. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And from here, we're going to discuss a little bit about what GIS Sync is gonna show you today. So they're gonna discuss construction cost engineering and how it is today. A better way to do that via the new application and product cost map. They're going to show you a couple demonstrations, um, discuss some use cases, and they're going to provide you with some resources. 
before we get started with them, let's go ahead and do one poll. I'm going to go ahead and launch that for you guys. How does your organization conduct construction cost estimating equipment, material, and labor today? Spreadsheets, historical data, RS means books, rule of thumb, or other? If you could just take a second to choose the options that best represent how you're doing this now. Looks like a lot of you are using spreadsheets. Some of you haven't voted yet. How does your organization conduct construction cost estimating today? Spreadsheets, historical data, RS means books, rule of thumb, or other. Okay, so it looks like a majority of you are using spreadsheets, and the next highest selection is historical data. We're going to close this poll, and now we're going to go ahead and pass it to GIS Inc. Kevin? Excellent. Thanks, Krista. Great intro. It was a, a, a quick walk through the, the last 11 months, I guess, of, of, our, of our lives. So yeah, it, it kind of came on uh, pretty quick out there at the, the partner conference, and, and we're now just three weeks away from, from, that, uh, from that milestone. So what we did uh, is took the, and I'm, I'm waiting for Steve, I think, to take control and show the, show the slides. But what we did, we took that idea from the partner conference and we wanted to not miss an opportunity in the, at the Esri user conference in San Diego in July. And so we put together a proof of concept and rolled that, and rolled that out with us to San Diego, really with an effort to pulse the market. You know, it's always a good idea when a bunch of us GIS geeks get around a, a, a picnic table, as Krista mentioned, and, and throw an idea out there on the table, but it's another idea to see how the market responds and, and is this in fact a useful tool. And so we, we took a proof of concept with us out to San Diego. We, we rolled it out and we got just amazing feedback. Uh, we had several people just stop by and say that they could use that next week. And, and so we, we really walked out of San Diego feeling like we had something. So we poured the resources in and we built this product and, and really launched it uh, right before the holiday. But, but I guess you could say we kind of had our, our coming out party at the Esri Water Conference a couple weeks ago. Some of you may have been at that conference and seen us in the exhibit area or, or attended our presentation. But that, that poll that, that Krista just conducted is really useful. And it's it, it, from what Krista was saying, so spreadsheets and historical data, that, that, that aligns with what we've seen over the, the last year when we talked to our customers and talked to, to the several water utilities and even with the folks at Gordian is, you know, the, the bottom line is all organizations use cost data today in some form or fashion. And, you know, typically it's a mix of sources, right? Spreadsheets, rule of thumb, historical data, and even that RS means book. We, you know, David Topman, who many of us on this, on this webinar know, you know, he, he references, you know, just having the year over year RS means book and pulling that out anytime he was doing a material takeoff or, or if he was trying to figure out if it was going to be a capital expense or an operations expense. And so I think the bottom line is all organizations use cost data today and it's typically a mix. And so, so why would anybody want to switch? Why would anybody consider saying, hey, we already do that today? Well, it, it comes back to a productivity gain. And I think when we get into this and we start walking through and showing and telling, you're going to see it. It's, it's literally marrying up RS means data with ArcGIS so you can select your assets in a map and get the results. And so uh, we're really excited about the prospectus and, and what, that, what that means for organizations that, that need this data. So uh, next slide, please. So the RS means benefit, just to kind of touch on, you know, the data. I mean, these guys have been around and producing construction cost data for over 75 years. Um, it's highly accurate, and we're going to touch on kind of some of the data sources and how they build that, what they invest year over year. But it is, in fact, updated quarterly. So it takes into account, you know, gyrations in the market, the material market, or, or even labor market, supply demand. It takes all that into account. And, and is updated quarterly. It's it's tied down to the three-digit zip code, so it's localized. And you know their their mantra over over the last 75 years has always been about hey let's let's help organizations get the estimates about 80% of the way there. You know they can then use the in-house knowledge or or more local knowledge to refine it to get it to more of 100%. But the bottom line is to 
to help organizations produce these estimates better, faster. Next slide, please. So touching on the annual investment that that Gordian and RS Means Data and their team make, they have every year they they allocate more than 22,000 hours on research, right? And so they've got a whole team of construction cost engineers that are are looking at, and you can see the you can see the numbers here for materials over 55,000 materials, 35 different trades or industries, over close to 700 equipment types, about a thousand locations. So and again, this is not only an annual update, but it's just it's an everyday kind of monitoring, updating, so they can they can create their quarterly updates um, and tie those things down to reflect what's going on on the ground. So they're committed to the data. That's that's their business, and they've got a they've got a whole army of people and time allocated every year to continue to invest and make that data more accurate. Excellent. So how's the database built? It's, it's pretty simple. Anybody that's involved, and if you guys have been supported any of these workflows for construction cost engineering, it's all about material, labor, and equipment. And they can they have data that ties it all the way down to individual equipment pieces. Uh, they can do it by unit, assembly. But you add all these things up, the, the material, labor, and equipment to get the cost. And and that's what, you know, when you look at the book, you can kind of see the, the level of detail it goes into. So let's take a quick look at what that looks like. Next slide. And so here, you know, we're taking an example of a, of a condenser. So we're getting into the HVAC world. Um, and, and, you know, if you're trying to decide, hey, is this something we want to, you know, outsource or is this something we want to do in-house, they, they can break it down and help you with that decision from a costing standpoint. But they even give you uh, more detail and tell you, hey, if you implement this condenser, this is roughly how long it should last. This is how often you should or could repair it. Uh, so in addition to cost data, it's, it's got it's got life lifespan data as well for for all their assets. Next slide. So just like everybody else in in the digital world, right? Everybody's gone digital. So RS Means data for years was was known as the the cost construction cost engineering book, and and even you know people kind of refer to it as the Bible for construction cost engineering. It's evolved into the digital age, and so they even built RS RS Means online and make that available. And and but even there, you have to. Uh, still build your your total cost by line by line lookup and or data entry. So, you know it requires the the quantity takeoff to get to the unit. So you're going to have to get in here and, and spend some time building out your project. Whether again it's a material takeoff or you're doing something for your CIP budgeting or planning or you've got a main break and you're trying to decide if if or a main replacement if it's going to come out of your opex or capex. I mean all those things are going to have to be built up and it, it takes time and and so even though digital, it's still extra steps, longer time. Next slide. And so that gets us to really kind of teeing up cost map and why we think that this is a better way and, and what we've heard kind of initially as we've rolled this product out from our customers and, and people in the, in the industry. Um, we're all familiar with uh, obviously operating in a GIS environment and so so now if we've you know we've bridged the gap over to RS means data tapped right into their API so so basically you select the assets and you get costing data but then you can take it several steps further and you're going to see this when Steve jumps on here and, and walks us through some some examples you're able to on the fly change the material type change the diameters and things that impact cost and and your cost estimate will will dynamically reflect those changes so uh, you, you know one thing kind of stepping back big picture here this cost map application is a software as a service and all we require that you bring is your your Esri identity and a map service if you're able to uh, publish a map service whether it's through its ArcGIS online or ArcGIS enterprise so you bring those two things and and um, we point to those things through cost map and and away you go you're able to get in here and do your your construction cost estimating so I think instead of talking about it to me the best way to, to see it is to see it in action so Steve do you want to jump in and, and walk us through a few examples here sure thanks Kevin and just keep me honest here and make sure you can see my screen 
uh, as as we go through this. But um, yep. Kevin yeah. mentioned that all you need to bring to the table is your Esri identity and a web map or a, a map service. So I wanted to start from scratch here to kind of show you how that all integrates together. So I, I hit uh, the cost map application and it immediately asked me to log in with my Esri identity. So uh, we come over here and we can log in and we can tie this to your uh, domain accounts as well. So if you need to you know, uh, add uh, additional security to that model, uh, you have access to do that. So once we log in here, and now we're accessing this the software as a service cost map, running over the web, hitting your authoritative uh, information. In this case, right now, we're dealing with water utilities. Uh, cost map will be able to support other uh, schemas um, as we roll out this year, but uh, this is what you're looking at right now is a water distribution center system. And so our our first goal with cost map was to make this as, and I hate to use the word easy, but as easy to use as possible. We want to give you information with the fewest number of clicks that we can possibly imagine. So uh, I think we got down to three clicks. So the first click here is to activate the cost map toolbar. Second click is to activate a tool that allows me to select an area. Now we can use existing project areas that may be constructed within the GIS department, your capital improvement areas or construction areas. And those can be included within the map like you see here in my map. So I can activate this tool, select this existing area. That area goes out and selects all the assets that intersect that polygon, takes those assets and mirrors them up with the RS means data API and quickly gives me a list of each one of those assets uh, here in the uh, table view here with their running cost, their estimated uh, construction cost with a running total down at the bottom. So each asset with its cost individually with a total cost down at the bottom, three clicks, right? Three clicks, that's all we want you to have access to to get this stuff as quick as possible. Now, now this is uh, you know one sort of use case. Just give me some quick numbers. I just need to get this data very quickly so I can use it in a report or a presentation that I got to do or report to the board, whatever it might might take. Um, but we know that you may want to massage this information a little bit more. So one of the the next click that you might take was to export this out as a spreadsheet. So we're going to give you access to all the assets, just like you see here on the screen with the assets broken down by their material type and their uh, estimated construction cost. But we're also going to allow you to export that as a spreadsheet. So here's that same information then uh, download as a spreadsheet within you then have already gone through that first step. Instead of opening up a spreadsheet and going line by line, we've done that for you behind the scenes. We've collected all the assets. We uh, assign the estimated construction cost to each one and we put that into a spreadsheet for you and now you can take off and run with this and, and do with it what you need to to prepare for your presentations. It's three clicks, right? I added a fourth one in there just to get you the spreadsheet, but that's really our goal here was to make it uh, nice and easy to get at the information. So let me back up just a little bit here and talk about some of these other options that we have. One of the things that we also wanted to provide you with the capability of doing is set up some scenarios. Like, first off, I want to be able to pit, uh, pick the release date of information. Do I want to use uh, current information? Do I want to use forecasted going out 36 months in advance? We're going to provide you with, with uh, you know, three years worth of future estimation or go back a year. So what does it look like now versus last year versus next year? So you can set up the release date that you want to work with. And then you can assign a scenario. Am I doing a new construction? Am I replacing existing infrastructure or repairing existing infrastructure? Let's, let's change this to replacing. And with these two scenarios, we give you the default values that we use to do the calculations that Gordian applies these calculations to as it's doing its construction cost estimation. But we wanted to let you override this, right? Use your institutional knowledge, use your understanding of the area a little bit better and, and be able to override some of these numbers. So here you can place and update these factors as, as needed. So a few configuration settings that we provide you to sort of set the stage. And then you can come back in here and do the same thing. Let's select this area. Let's go out. In this case, we're doing a, a replacement and uh, we get those factors that seven and 15% factor applied to my material and my labor cost uh, to now all the assets that get selected within this extent here. And this is a, a, an example of a capital improvement project area. 
Now, each one of these assets also give me the ability to drill in and see the equipment, material, and labor that uh, we talked about earlier. So all this information that you have at your fingertips through the books and through the online service now become part of the application here at your fingertips. And in some cases, some of these assets require additional information like trenching. So for water mains, I need to do some trenching. So I have to add some additional equipment and labor to this total cost estimation here. So we give the ability to drill down and to see the independent items and elements for each one of these assets. Kevin also mentioned the ability to change certain characteristics of assets. So I can override, in this case, the material or diameter for this particular asset with what is associated within my schema. So we leverage the, uh, the ESRI data model. So the subtypes and the domains play right into this workflow. And so I can pick from an, an acceptable list of subtypes and domains. Let's change this from ductile iron to high density uh, PVC here. And then when I do that, it automatically goes out and changes the cost estimation for that particular asset and then redoes my running total. Again, I can export that out to Excel. I can do what if scenarios against one asset or many assets. And I can adjust these on the fly to give me you know, those what if type of questions for this data. So this is nice and all, and this gives me the ability to work with existing project areas, but what if I wanna do ad hoc areas? So let me zoom into an area down here. And I wanna work with this uh, little uh, uh, offshoot right here in this little subdivision. So I can also use this tool to drag and drop and draw a, a sort of a capital improvement project area or an area that I'm interested in. And the same type of analysis takes place based on my interaction with the map here. So I drew an area on the map, it selected all the assets that intersect that area, and uh, I get the quick list. Export to Excel, and I'm on my way. But what if I want to fine tune this selection a little bit here? We also wanted to give you the ability to add or remove assets from this list here. So I can use the remove button, and I can draw a box or pick a, a particular asset and remove that from the existing list. And let's also remove this one here. So now I've really isolated this, this little offshoot area and I've gotten down to my, uh, the assets that are interested to me. Now we've had a lot of people say, well, you know, I only wanna work with um, water mains that are a certain age, or I only wanna work with certain types of assets, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you the ability to filter. So we have a filter tool here that allows us to go a little bit deeper into the assets and the types of assets that you're working with and, and maybe uh, filter by installation date or material or other types of, of characteristics assigned to that piece of information to further drill down what you're interested in. We're also gonna give you the ability to use the layer capabilities to only turn on, say I only wanna work with my water main. So turn everything else off, allow me to select my water mains and, can, and run the same type of cost estimation processes through. So these two tools allow us to further filter out the assets that I'm only interested in before I run my analysis. I can also add back in features. So you saw me remove, well, let's add back in that water main and it goes back into my, my, my list there. So the quick tools here, select an existing project area that's been uh, you know, predefined within uh, my GIS layer and exposed through a map service draw on the fly, add or remove, clear or export. Now, we also wanted to give you the ability to do what if construction area. So let me zoom in here a little bit further. And we notice that we have this, uh, this subdivision here is not quite finished from, a, from an infrastructure standpoint. So what we also want to be able to do is add on the fly assets. So here I'm going to add in a new water main. I'm going to create a water main. I'm just going to do a quick digitize here on screen. So this is just an on-screen what if scenario. So I'm gonna add this in here. I'm gonna double click to finish. It brings up the pop-up window again with all the subtypes and domains that are assigned to me through the schema. And I can pick these from a drop-down list. I'm gonna use all the defaults here and let's just submit this. Once I submit this, then I can go back to my construction cost estimation process I only want to grab this particular water main. Let's grab that water main. And now let's do a what if on just that asset type. And by default, because of the, of the database itself, it had a default material and diameter. But then as you saw earlier, I can override these things 
and and do what if scenarios and adjust those those values and then export that out as well and continue my cook and my control my construction cost estimation process so basically three to four scenarios quickly come in pick a a, a designated area either by clicking on a map with a, a polygon that already exists or drawing, then adding or removing assets, exporting that out to Excel, or digitizing new assets, new infrastructure, and doing what if scenarios on the fly. So that's sort of it in a nutshell. This is a, a tool that we wanted to provide a, a, a quick intuitive tools to get you back your assets as quick as possible with the construct, construction cost estimation tied to it. Kevin? Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Great demo. I'll switch back to the to the slides. All right. So I think everybody could see the the power, right? If you think about how you guys are doing cost estimates today, like like I said, the thing we've learned about all water utilities, public works departments that deal with water, uh, they're involved in some form or fashion, you know, interfacing and working with cost data. And you know a lot of that can turn into a bit of a laborious process where here, I think everybody can kind of see the productivity gain that that could exist by doing it now through through the GIS. So let's look at the next slide, Steve. Let's take a look at the product roadmap. So just kind of wanted to share where we are today and some of the things that we've got on the docket and kind of paint the vision of where we're going to go with cost map in 2018 so version one uh is ready right now in feb and one of the things we're, we're working on and, and we're just days away is is making that the demo site that steve just walked through available uh to, to users for a period of time so um, that's going to become available starting in March. Um, I've got some resource links I want to sh hold up at the end of the, the talk here and ask everybody to kind of look at those on their own time. Um, but if we look at the product itself and, and expanding on it, today's today it's designed and it works with water assets only. Um, Q2, we've got slated to round it out with waste and storm. So if you buy a seed of cost map today, basically, um, you know, sometime in Q2, you're going to have access to the water and storm data as well, in addition to your to your water data. Uh, also in Q2, we've got slated to have this up and running on Esri's ArcGIS Marketplace, uh, just as another avenue or another way to to get access to to the product itself. We wanted to partner with Esri on that. And so we've got that slated now for some time in Q2. In Q3, um, we're looking, we're in conversations with several third party, uh, not just CMMS companies, but other other GIS or location-based companies that have product that that need cost data. Uh, you can sit there and think about, you know, if your CityWorks users out there, um, there's several instances in many workflows where you do need cost data, whether it's materials, equipment, or labor. And so um, we're we're aiming for a third quarter to have that integration solved. I think we'll see some proof of concepts uh, early on out at the CityWorks user conference in May, just I guess if anybody on the call is a CityWorks user as a teaser. Um, also, Q3 um, this year, we're looking at expanding into roads and bridges. If you guys know anything about RS means data, you know that that book doesn't just uh, focus on water utilities. There's several other industries, and so we've identified roads and bridges as a, a next possible play for us in this product and to see this thing continue to scale out over as we go year over year. So um, this will be, um, we're gonna have this product roadmap up on our webpage here in a couple weeks and it's gonna be a dynamic roadmap and things will continue to add and, and evolve as, as the, the product uh, continues to grow. So next slide, please. We'll go into uh, some, some use cases. So I think you guys, this I know this community knows the group down at Opelika Utilities pretty well. They're a common, uh, regular uh, webcaster. Uh, been a key account of ours. We've worked with these guys for over a decade, and and they do a lot of great stuff um, down in Opelika, Alabama, and and so they've they've actually been working with our pre-release version and have had it. They had it all 
for a, a, I think it was five days. And so we said, all right, we're going to call you in five days and we want feedback. What, you know, where are the use cases you see right out of the gate that just make a lot of sense where CostMap can save you guys time, bring that productivity gain to you. First thing out of the gate was material takeoffs. You know, they run, they do a number of material takeoffs and sometimes just because, you know, they don't have a guy or a team in the back room doing these takeoffs and, and figuring out what the costs are going to be. It's often juggled with other priorities and multitask. And, and some of these material takeoffs, because of, you know, the, the number of assets they're looking at, can take two, three weeks. And so one of the things they said, look, you know, you just saved us two weeks of, of manpower because we, you know, what, what took us two, three weeks, we're now able to do in five seconds. And that that's just a kind of a, the immediate ROI we we captured from those guys, you know, with the number of material takeoffs they're running. The other thing they talked about was their annual budget process. So, you know, they're on a they start really kind of fine tuning their budget in, starting in July. Uh, they run October 1 to September 30. And so through that through those three months, there's several iterations, you know, especially when you start looking at whether it's big main replacements or or your big capital projects, uh, just the ability in July and August to start doing several what if analysis and 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 different scenarios and and as Steve mentioned, being able to to do that analysis on the map, but export it out to a spreadsheet and continue to fine tune that. Uh, they see it, just this tool plugging in and, and helping them out with that process uh, and saving an immense amount of time. The third, the third area they talked about was, you know, I've kind of brought this up throughout the the conversation today was, you know, they, Alan was talking about a, you know, they have a, a 400 foot two inch line, you know, main replacement. Is this going to be an op, operations expense, capital expense? What account are we going to have to go to? Do we need to go to the board and and ask for a budget modification? And and so he felt like this application can can quickly give them a a ballpark on on which direction they're going to go or what account they can target to to fund the improvement. Uh, the other thing that they talk about, and, and maybe some of you can relate, but they uh, they have a board of directors that um, I guess like many boards, I can kind of relate to that here at GIS Inc., but they like seeing the sausage made. So um, literally uh, see several use cases where they're in the board meeting and they can pull up cost map and run through the what if scenarios and, and really get the buy in from the board as to prioritizing some of their capital expenses or or some of their improvement money. And then, you know, Alan and Dan talked a lot about, you know, the bond rating and, and the ability now when they go to New York City, which they don't do, this is not an annual thing, but they just went through it and they were able to renegotiate the interest rates on their bonds and, and really kind of capture uh, $9 million to, to fund some improvements and, and savings on on that renegotiation and so that's all about having good data that's all about having good process and they see that you know in those meetings up in new york city where they're doing that meeting with s p and 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 working through those negotiations having having access to a tool like that gives them confidence gives s p and the folks doing the bond rating confidence that there's good process in place and so they felt like these were the top five and this was after about five days of using it I know when we circle back with those guys at Opelika, they're going to have another list of, of five or ten other use cases. So I'm sure you guys, as Steve went through his demonstration, could see some some use cases where it makes sense for you. Let's take a look at the next slide, Steve. So I mentioned the Esri Water Conference that occurred two weeks ago. Again, I'm sure some of you were there. You know, one of the things that really stuck out to all of us, and I'm sure you heard it loud and clear with, with David LaFrance up there in the plenary talking, you know, he's the AWWA CEO. His quote's right there, America needs to invest at least $1 trillion over the next 25 years for buried assets. So, and then if you couple that with our aging infrastructure and, and the system decline and the, and the infrastructure score of a D plus nationally, you know, obviously some states are, better than others, but you can, all this information's out there. Uh, we all know that GIS as a technology is going to play a huge role, right? There's, there's even products out there designed to help organizations identify their, their critical assets or high risk assets. And, 
And so the, the next question after you've identified your high risk assets is what's it going to cost to repair? What's it going to cost to replace? And, and so that's where we see Cosmap coming in and really being able to expedite and streamline that whole process, give answers. And, and so, so organizations can, can spend that time on, on either other analytics of their business or actually doing real work. So, um, uh, really a lot of excitement. I think that, um, you know, we're going to see a lot of improvements across all organizations. I'm sure this isn't news to anybody on the call. Um, and again, GIS can help. Cosmap can really help with productivity gain in terms of helping you understand what those, those capital expenses are going to be, help you prioritize and, and, and so on. So let's go to the resources slide. So resources, uh, we've got a couple links here. Um, I think the best thing to do is probably just take a quick screen capture um, of these links. Uh, first ones are, are on our web page. We've got a site with Cosmap. It's got a good demonstration video there. Um, take a look at that. It's it's a quick minute and a half video. It's got more information where you can download the white paper as well as um, you know. The other link there is the free trial. So that's a registration form that we're gonna be signing people up. I think if you think about the product roadmap, we have that available starting in March, but we wanna go ahead and capture some folks that are interested in that free trial. I think we're talking about a 30 day trial. And um, of course, you know, myself and Steve Mulberry and Alan Bacon's on the call and we're gonna to get to some Q and A here and um, Alan Bacon's on from Gordian and, and knows everything there is to know about the RS means data. We can help us answer any questions there. But that's our contact information. Feel free to shoot us emails. Uh, you know, Steve's, Steve's wanting to, you know, one of the things we've learned about the, the folks we interface with in the GIS community, some folks, you know, are involved and support this workflow at the organization and others aren't. And so one of the things that we're really trying to do is get in front of the folks at your organizations that support this workflow because we think it's such a powerful productivity gain. And, and you know, what Steve just walked through, he's wanting to do with, with everybody. So that is an option. Um, so just email us on that. So Steve, next slide, please. Or is that a... That everything. All right. So I think we're going to go back to Krista now for some polling questions and some Q and A and wrap up. Thanks, Kevin. Definitely, we do have some uh, questions coming in. Let's just jump right to those, and hopefully, we can get to all of them before we run out of time. So during your roadmap, you actually answered several of the questions that came in about this being available um, with different data sets, specifically wastewater and roads and bridges. So um, there's some interest in that coming from our audience, just so you know. Good, good. Yeah, that, you know, that's consistent with what we heard even when we go all the way back when we pulsed the market out in San Diego. Uh, those, those were the things that we walked out of there feeling like, okay, these would be next in line. So I think we're, I think that's consistent with what we've heard. Great. Another one that came up though were sidewalk projects. Do you know if that's uh, in the RS means data and have you considered um, going in that direction at all? It is. We do have data for that. And um, I know it, we're, one of the other areas we're looking at is uh, public works type projects. And so you may well see that. Yep, and that's that's Alan for everybody's uh, benefit. Yeah. Alan Bacon with uh, Gordian, and so yeah, Alan, I know you got that data. And I think when we say roads and bridges, that's kind of that high level summary, right? It probably includes things like sidewalks and and yeah. other, if you will, transportation type assets like that, right? Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, we also had a couple questions about ArcGIS software, and is this cost map? specific to ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro? Is there a certain version that you have to have in order to use it? So right now, and this is Steve, so right now, CostMap um, only requires a web map being published out of the ArcGIS platform. So either ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. So you bring one, at least one identity, so one person uses their identity and shares with, with the cost map framework a web map of water distribution system right now. 
And with those two things in place, then uh, you get to use all the functionality. So ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise right now, we are definitely looking very hard at uh, taking this technology and moving it into desktop tools like ArcMap, ArcGIS Pro, AutoCAD, MicroStation, those kinds of things as well. But right now it's a web-based solution that just uses ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise web maps. Great, thanks. And so you can publish your web services from either ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap. So it's not limited. Um, Correct. Either version you can use. Correct. Great, so moving on to another question. Um, when you did the demonstration, um, Steve, and you drew the area of interest manually instead of a predefined area, does that get saved in the GIS database or is it just used at that time for the um, analysis and costing that you're doing right then? Yeah, I don't know who said that, but good eye, good eye. So uh, there's two ways. I can do an ad hoc, so just draw on the screen and then it gets erased when I close the web site down, but I could go into the editing tool where you saw me edit a new water main. I could have edited a project layer and add a new project area and then use that as well. So we give you two options there on the fly and then with and then uh, create an area and save it within the project layer itself. Thank you. So we also had a couple questions about um, if the webinar is being recorded, which it is. So those of you that are still on the line, we are recording the webinar and it will be posted on Meetup and GeoNet. Um, here's another question for you guys. So um, if there's a, um, for the data that you're doing and you're uh, in the field, they want to know if uh, this would collect depth of a main for an increased cost. So if they have deeper mains, is there a costing in the data that accounts for that? So that's probably going to be a double question here. So Alan, let's first start with that. Um, do you guys take into consideration depth? Yeah, we use that. Uh, the way we've costed it right now, to keep it simple, we have, you assumes a, a fixed depth, but um, one of the ways for now, you can work around that as either with your um, spreadsheet model, and we can make that available what that is for your calculations. Um, with either within the spreadsheet, you can do that, or with those factors that we put on there in the end, where you could increase or decrease slightly the, the rate to, to compensate for that. Um, in the future, we're looking at adding more, um, this potential for adding more specific scenarios that might incorporate some of that stuff, but that for now, that's the right, that's what handle that. So, so let me just add one thing to that. So as, as, as Alan mentioned, we, through the interface where we allow you to do, you know, pick the release date and or the type of scenario, we're going to add additional parameters to override depth of materials and or to use depth that's a part of the database schema um, moving forward. So that's where you'll see those, some of those changes take place. Thanks, guys. So moving on, a little more detailed question about that web service and the utility data that the um, customers would have available. Are there specific attributes that need to be included in their data to make this work? So right now, we've leveraged the local government information model provided by Esri, but we're not limited to that schema. We understand that everybody's going to have their own uh, sort of nuances with the schema, your own parameters, your own at, your own attributes. So, so what? So that the the approach we've taken is that uh, if 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 you want to use a solution, we immediately analyze your data and we give you sort of a percentage on what will match immediately, and then what would have to be configured. And then we take the remaining assets and we we look at those assets and we tie them to the Gordian. We, and Gordian works with us with the RS Means Data API and we make those connections happen. So we understand that everybody's not going to have the same schemas and we have some, some processes in place to work around that. Yeah, that's a good answer, Steve. And uh, let me just kind of pile on to that, you know, and just kind of expectation wise. We, we've set a, a kind of a joint goal between GIS Inc. and Gordian that, you know, Steve, like Steve said, we'll give you, we're going to do an initial assessment, give you a percent what you guys match today. But over the course of the next 30 days is really our goal to get that, get that data mapped to Gordian. And, and so your experience goes from, let's say, if you start out at a 40% match over 30 days, you get up in, you know, into that 80, 90%. So that's, that's what our commitment is to our customers right now out of the gate. 
Thank you. Um, and here's the question that many of these uh, attendees are asking. What's the cost? Is this an annual fee? Is it a one-time cost? And, and part two to that is, if they were to purchase cost map, does this include the RS means membership or is that an additional cost? Great question. Uh, so everything's all inclusive, right? So it's it's $3,600 per seat, $3,600 $3, per user. So that's about $300 a month, right? And so it's an annual fee and it's all inclusive of access to cost map and your license to RS means data. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. So I think we're gonna go ahead and end the webinar. There were a couple more detailed questions that um, I'm gonna get with you guys and we'll make sure the attendees get their answers. I hope everyone enjoyed the webinar today. Please don't hesitate to contact any of the presenters or myself if you have additional questions or you'd like to just discuss this in more detail. We also have a survey that's gonna launch once the webinar ends. Please just take a few minutes. It's four questions. Uh, it won't take you long. Thank you for joining us today.